After years of denying the federal government's role in the censorship of Americans on social media, the Biden administration now appears to have been caught red-handed doing precisely that. A new report out from the House Select Committee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government concluded this week that the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency has spent years surveilling and censoring the speech of Americans on social media. For more reaction to this bombshell report, we're going to bring in Wyoming Republican and Congresswoman and member of the Select Committee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government, Congresswoman Harriet Hageman. Congresswoman, thank you so much uh, for being with us here. There, there have been countless instances over the last number of years, especially during COVID, but also even during our elections, of social media companies allegedly acting at the behest of the federal government and even the Democratic Party. Now your committee says it has definitive proof. What did you uncover and what are you prepared to do to hold this administration accountable? Well, I think over the last six months, we have been able to uncover a variety of things, including the back door that the federal government had into the social media companies such as Twitter. When we went through the, t the Twitter files with Matt Taibbi and, and Michael Schellenberger, mm -hmm. what they described is a situation where there were over 70 agencies, 70 federal agencies that were in direct contact with the social media companies. And whatever kinds of tweets or comments that were uh, disfavored, if you will, they would contact the companies and ask them to censor them. One of the things that's so important about this is that the First Amendment applies to the federal government, regardless of whether they use the third party to do their dirty work. Mm -hmm. And so the, the federal government cannot do indirectly what it cannot do directly. And the, the First Amendment is very clear. So what you have with a Biden administration and the Democrat Party and even the mainstream media attempting to censor conservatives and censor our ability to communicate, uh, it's pretty stunning information. You said 70 agencies, not seven, 70 agencies. Did you, get a, did you get a sense, Congresswoman, of how long this has been going on? Because, you know, it, it's it, you could say that it, it's maybe it's increased uh, it, during the Biden administration. But for a lot of Americans, they have suspected that this symbiotic relationship, that this censorship has been going on for for years, even before President Biden took office. Well, I, I think that that's fair. I think that that's true. And what we saw when uh, with President Trump was that so many of the agencies were not carrying out his orders or his agenda. They were continuing with their own. And so I do think that you, have, you will see where agencies have worked during the elections, especially to censor any kind of disfavored, uh, any kind of disfavored communication from mm. conservatives uh, from the center right, if you will. And so, yes, it was yeah. over 70 agencies, the, uh, the the office of the president of the United States, the office of the first lady. Uh, they were trying to get tweets taken down that they disagreed with or that might have been critical mm. of the Bidens in some way. So I do yeah. believe that this has been going on for quite some time. But I think that starting in 2020, actually, I believe after the 2016 election, what you see is you see the social media companies doing things mm. such as shadow banning conservatives or yeah. Uh, uh, stopping us from being able to communicate. But the Biden administration and the Democrats yeah. have been absolutely uh, horrific in terms of suppressing First Amendment rights through these social media companies. Congresswoman, uh, for their part, CISA, the, 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 the entity there that uh, you, you mentioned in the, in the report, is pushing back on the report's findings. In a statement, the agency's director, Brandon Wales, wrote in part, CISA does not and has never censored speech or facilitated censorship. Any such claims are patently false. Your response to their reaction? But we're covering up instances where they, in fact, did that. And we're covering, we're disclosing, uh, we're, we're disclosing, we're identifying situations where they did. And we're identifying situations where they worked with third parties, such as the organization that is housed at Stanford mm -hmm. University, to suppress speech that they disagreed with. So the fact is that the federal government has engaged in a violation, a, a broad violation of our First Amendment rights in an effort to suppress our ability to communicate. Congresswoman, the, the, the next logical question is, what do you do about it? And uh, what are House Republicans prepared to, to advance in the way of accountability here? Well, first of all, we have to continue to expose this. So we have to, we're, we're going to continue to have hearings. The Weaponization Committee will continue to have hearings where we bring in these organizations, these third parties that have been working with the federal government to censor speech. That's one of the things that we have to do is continue to expose it. Transparency is incredibly important here. 
But I also believe that we have to start holding federal officials and individuals who work for the federal government personally liable and responsible when they engage in conduct that violates our individual civil liberties. Mm. So whether it is an effort to go after the FBI's efforts to go after Catholics for exercising their freedom of religion, or it is the FBI and the DOJ weaponizing our federal agencies to go after parents who are exercising their First Amendment rights at school board meetings. Right. I believe that we need to pass legislation so that when these federal agencies and these individual federal employees engage in unconstitutional conduct, they can be held personally liable to the people that they have affected. Well, right this, now, they essentially have immunity, and we need to change that. They this, need to be held responsible. There's also the power of the purse, of course, and that's, yes, that's Congress, Congress's uh, prerogative with Wyoming Congresswoman Harriet Hageman. Thank you so much. We appreciate you bringing that to us.